Barack Obama has called them the first Americans, but when it comes to funding and living conditions, many American Indians appear to be coming in last. This is especially true for the Glala Sioux, a tribe that has lived for generations on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Here's RT's correspondent, Christine Frazau. For the American Indian, there is history and there is now, fantasy and reality. And on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, there are no twisted illusions about which is which. It's because of the, the poverty, the high unemployment rate here on the reservation. There's just no jobs. Oglala Sioux Tribe President Teresa Tubal says about 80% of people who live on the reservation are unemployed. Even for those looking, there are few options. There are a few outreach organizations, a Subway sandwich shop, and the Prairie Wind Casino, which employs about 300 people from the tribe. But when it opened, the goal was to draw people in from the surrounding counties, a plan that so far has failed. Unfortunately, uh, the primary revenue probably comes from the reservation itself. Ivan Sorbel with the Pine Ridge Area Chamber of Commerce says they're working on building an economy from scratch, encouraging entrepreneurs to start their own businesses. Services like oil changes, tire, tire services, that, that's lacking around here. Uh, a barber, we don't have a barber. Ice cream, you can't buy a shake here on the reservation. It's estimated that 80% of the dollars that come onto the reservation leave the reservation within 72 hours. And much of that money is spent right here across the state line in White Clay, Nebraska. Right. Give me a shot of yeah, courage. Nice. Okay, what do you need? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing out here today. It's like what everyone does. Hustling some money, that's what we're doing right now, trying to see, what's, see we could get drunk. That's the plan. Keep warm. Even in the middle of the day, this is a common scene, since White Clay is just two miles south of Pine Ridge. But most here think the proximity is irrelevant. <laughs> They drive 20 miles. They drive. There's bootleggers that hold it by the case, by the truckload. Draws everything out. All the it madness around here. You know. About everything. Numb, <laughs> numb everything up. In a recent meeting with tribe leaders, U.S. President Barack Obama calls them the first Americans and pledged his support. I know what it means to feel ignored and forgotten, and what it means to struggle. So you will not be forgotten as long as I'm in this White House. Uh. Tubal says base funding has not increased for years, and more than half of it never even makes it to the reservation. They allocate the dollars on Congress level, then it goes to the regional level, and they take their cut. By the time it gets to the tribes, there are 16 in this region alone. They have to fight for what's left. It's really hard that they have us fighting among each other over the dollars when the need is so great on every reservation. The need here, perhaps most apparent in the way people live. Most homes look like this and often have 10 or 12 people living inside. We need 4,000 homes. Along some of the roads, skeletons of old cars. These too are used as homes. The buildings that do stand strong are often rotting on the inside. Our buildings are condemned. Tribal leaders say their pleas are simple. Treat us how you would a foreign com country, how you work with them. That's what we are. We're the foreign country in your backyard. Though the answers still seem a long way off. Now, those pictures and words that you just uh, saw and heard, they've been uh, re documented re very recently in a report presented to the United Nations. The author of that report is Raquel Rolnick. She's the U.N. Special Rapporteur on the Right to Adequate Housing, and, join and she joins us now from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And also joining us is uh, Christine Frazau, the, uh, the correspondent of that piece. Let's start with you, Ms. Rolnick, however. Tell us, um, I mean, I saw the pictures, and, and I'm, I don't think you did, but I saw the pictures and the words of the pe of the. the uh, Native Americans who are openly drinking uh, in the middle of the day, not being shy about this at all. I'm guessing this is something that was uh, that you saw uh, on a very frequent basis. Yes, uh, my mission was basically on housing conditions, and I can tell you that among all the places, all the cities, and all the regions that I have visited, Pine Ridge was where I have seen the worst conditions more overcrowding, more despair, more unemployment, 
and also conditions that are really, really worrying. It's, of course, it's not just a matter of housing, it's a matter of ways of living as a whole. And I felt the sense that the community feels that it has been years and years of neglect from U.S. government, and they see themselves as an independent nation that uh, uh, deserves much more respect and honor from U.S. government as well. Okay, let's go to Christine at this point. Christine, uh, you said that uh, years and years of ne you heard years and years of neglect uh, from Ms. Rolnick there by the uh, by the U.S. government. Um, the people who live on this reservation, which is, I believe, the second largest reservation in the entire United States, have they said anything about the the negligence? Uh, by the United States, and also how much of this personally do they take, res uh, do they take responsibility? I hope you understand my question. Do yeah. they say this is all just U.S. government's fault, or do they say this is partly our fault as well? No, I think that they see that there's so many factors that go into this. Certainly they hoped that they would be getting more money, especially after they met with President Obama, um, the leader of the tribe who you saw in that story. She's already been to Washington several times. Uh, they, they understand that there's a lot of factors, but they really had hoped that the issues about federal money that is set aside already to them, but just gets trickled down and gets whittled away by the time it gets there. They had hoped that those issues would have been solved by now. Many of them, however, I should say that I spoke to at least big supporters of President Obama. They just see the money, uh, once it goes through Congress, having problems. But as far as neglect, you're absolutely right. They feel neglected. Um, and that translates into a lot of other things, not just housing, a huge suicide rate on the reservation. Certainly lots of issues that they face as a result of these conditions. Ms. Roldick, let me go to you now. Uh, let me ask you, uh, this, this, the, the pictures that we had seen, the, the desperation that we heard from Christine's story, is this more the norm or is this the exception to the rule based on your, fi based on your findings? Yes. I had, I had the opportunity to meet with other uh, tribal leaders from other nations in the U.S in an event that they were. Uh, and of course, we have different situations when we, when we think on different tribes. So of course, there, there are differences uh, between different uh, Indian reservations. And also, we have even tribes that don't even have a reservation, wow. which has been uh, acknowledged, recognized, and fully acknowledged by the U.S. government. So I think that maybe Lakota people now are the ones who are the worst among all uh, Native American or First American, like uh, President Obama said, uh, among all of them. But at the same time, uh, I see that, of course, there are internal problems as well. The issue of housing is not one issue. There, it's an intermingling of issues. and a ways of living, but the key message I got from them is that there is a history. They trade their land to receive education, health, and housing from the from U.S. government. So that's exactly what they are claiming. And it's very positive that President Obama met with tribal leaders for the first time in years and commit himself and his government to try to do something about, but it's a very, very long story of neglect. Christine, I wanted to hear a little bit more from you, but we are kind of running out of time, so I, I unfortunately can't get to you now. But uh, ladies, both of you, uh, Raquel Rolnick, a UN Special Rapporteur, and Christ, RT's Christine Frizzell, thank you both uh, so much for being uh, with us today. Absolutely.